struggling with all those other sites, it's like, this is just not going to work. And so I real I saw on scripture, like, oh, wow, okay, this seems like they, you know, actually want to, you know, pay writers what they deserve. Yeah. We're, we're going to slap that answer onto a commercial sometime. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. about as good as it gets. Yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Scripted Podcast. My name is John and I am joined by... Kevin. <laughs> we have, Are we just going with first name now? We have no, no titles now. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> John and Kevin in the morning. Um, <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what we're talking about this week. Uh, today we are talking about content writing in broadcast journalism. Okay. Okay, so like uh, like the six o'clock news. Yeah, what goes on behind the scenes to get that show up and what kind of content writing needs to be done to do so? Yeah, I, uh, I've actually always kind of wondered a little bit about what that process is like. Uh, it's weird that newscasters are kind of like these local celebrities and, and Kevin and I are actually both from Philadelphia Home of Action News. Which, That's right. Which is, Jim Garner. Yeah, which is the OG of that news format, I believe. I think they invented that that sort of that kind of cliche news format that we all know now started there. Um yeah, Jim Gardner and uh yeah, and that crew Leslie Tynan. <laughs> Leslie Tynan. <yeah. laughs> Shout out to the Action News Philly crew. Yeah, for real. <laughs> So, but we don't have Action News joining us today. Who do we have today, Kevin? Today we have Alexandra Carter. Okay. Um, you may have seen her or her seen some of her work at NBC News, New York Daily News, uh, Adweek, the Center for American Progress, and countless other news organizations. She worked as a broadcaster and now is a freelance writer and scripted writer. Yeah, and a damn good one, too. Uh, I think this is definitely going to be exciting. Yeah, she's going to tell us about the news business and the freelance writing business and what it's like to make the move from broadcast news to freelance writing and how those skills overlap. Yeah, let's jump into it. Welcome to the show, Alexander. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, we're thrilled to have you. So tell us a little bit about your professional experience obviously we have a lot of questions but uh i'd love for you to intro us a bit to everything yeah so i have about eight years of experience working as um a tv reporter and anchor so in local tv news um so my mom was actually a sports reporter and anchor so i grew up kind of you know, obviously watching her on TV and um, getting to go to some live shots and ride in the live truck with her. So kind of getting a little bit of a glimpse inside of that TV world. And so that's kind of what gave me the bug that that's what I wanted to do. Um, so I, I, you know, went up a traditional path. I min uh, majored in journalism in college and then you know, as you have to do taking that first TV job, you, you just move wherever. Um, Right. wherever there's a job so my first market was sherman texas um which i had never heard of um and i was there then i went to longview texas another place i hadn't heard of um then i went to huntsville alabama and then most recently quincy illinois another place i hadn't heard of so that's kind of uh, the nature of the beast is um just moving wherever right <laughs> and where do you uh where did you come from originally uh, so I was born in Germany, um, but my family moved to Canada when I was like a baby. So I don't remember Germany. Um, right. And then we moved down to Atlanta when I was in middle school. So I've just been all over. It's like the hardest question for me to answer is where I'm <laughs> from. <laughs> so when you got started in journalism, did you have to like learn how to do the, the whole broadcast voice and everything? Or? <laughs> Well, I, I did. I mean, they don't really tell you. To, they actually tell you the opposite, that you're not actually supposed to have one of those voices. You're supposed to just kind of talk like as if you're talking to a friend. Mm. Um, but I, I mean, I definitely like 
had one on and in my first market I, I did it and it totally didn't even sound like me and they were like yeah you should maybe like cut that back a little bit <laughs> <laughs> I'm like okay <laughs> so yeah you know they want you to just be a little more authentic but um it's funny in those first jobs kind of the lengths we go <laughs> oh I'm sure yeah <laughs> Well, so what, what kind of stories have you covered in the course of your career? Yeah, so I mean, working in four markets for about eight years, I've covered a ton of stories, um, everything from, you know, kind of local road repairs and closures to local politics. Um, I actually got to meet Joe Biden uh, on the 2020 campaign trail. Wow. Um, yeah, he did a campaign stop in one of our areas. So that was cool. Um, we also, our station, we covered three states. Um, so that was great. I, I enjoy politics. So I got to cover, you know, an inauguration in Iowa and then Illinois always has, you know, tons going on politically. So lots of stories there and Missouri as well. So that was a um, really cool experience for sure. Yeah, I bet. Um, so I, I kind of wanted to ask you really an inside baseball kind of question of, can you take us through the process of, uh, of a news story, of a given news story, how you start with a pitch and then end up with a broadcast? Can yeah. you take us through the process? Yeah. So yes, you do start with a pitch. Um, typically, if you're a reporter, you're expected to come in with three pitches a day. Um, so you know that usually requires some research before you even get to work. Um, so you have your pitches and then um, you're pitching to the anchors, other reporters are in there and then some producers and stuff. So those are the people who kind of have the say over what you pitch, what they're actually going to have you follow up on. Um, so then once that's all hammered out, you just have to start making calls, um, finding people who are going to go on camera with you, which is often the hardest part. Um, yeah. I think that's a big disadvantage over print journalism, you know, because you can have someone on the phone, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then they're like, oh, on camera. And then they don't want to <laughs> do the interview. <laughs> and of course, for TV, you have to have someone on camera. Also, we tend to work, you know, funky shifts. So if, you know, you're trying to turn a story for the five o'clock news and you're not call, you know, you probably wouldn't get into work till 2 p.m. So you're calling at three, you know, a lot of people who work nine to fives are, you know, done with the day at that point. So right. very challenging to knock down those interviews. Um, and then when, once that's done, you go and interview them. And these days, um, most reporters are one man bands. So there's no mm -hmm. cameraman, no editor, like it is just you doing everything. Um, so you go shoot it yourself, then you edit it yourself, and then you get ready to present it live. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, so say, when does the pitch happen? At what time of the day? So if you if are, yeah, if you're doing the five, uh, the six and the 10, that's like called the night side shift. The meeting is, you get in at 2, the meeting's typically at 2.15. Uh, 2.15 a.m.? P.m. P.m., all right. Okay. So the pitch happens at 2.15, you're making calls at 3, mm -hmm. and then you have the interview shot, edited, and ready to go live by 5? By 5, yeah. I mean, 6 if you're lucky, but yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> and How you're by yourself. Yeah, that's incredible. Uh, <laughs> do they even provide a van anymore? <laughs> you you get like a little, you know, a station like a CRB or something. Um, sometimes if you're doing like a big story, you may have a cameraman with you. Mm -hmm. um, when you go live, some stations do send a cameraman and a truck for that. But then some don't like, you know, some reporters are going live by themselves, you know, middle of a crime scene at, you know, 5 a.m. Oh, my God. What kind of camera are you guys working with? Oh, gosh, it was a Sony something. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so are you are you dealing with a camera like a lapel mic and a laptop? Yeah, yeah. And then, That's you know, you got it. your station car. And um, we used these little backpacks that was like TVU and it enabled us to go live, like without a, a truck or anything. Wow. What? When did this happen? Like, yeah. when did the I know it's crazy. It's been like that since I started. I started in like 2012 and it, it wasn't really a surprise. Like, you know, in college, they were like, this is how the industry's going. So, oh. yeah. Wow. Okay. 
Man, yeah, I, I guess I've been asleep. I, I thought it was still the old classic. I have a very nineties like yeah. reception of uh like I, I, I knew it was gonna have to be a quick turnaround, right, for nightly news. Yeah. Uh that's an incredibly quick turnaround. I thought that's like crazy. you would, you'd be in like super early in the morning to get a story going by Yeah, five. yeah, no, that that would be for the morning show. Um wow. which that's, that's you know, a whole other crazy shift in itself. How often right. does uh, like a morning show segment maybe not get done in time and end up on the night? Um, so I I worked in mornings um, for about two years, and it, it doesn't usually happen like that. It would be more so like breaking news happens mm -hmm. you know say like you're doing a story on a community picnic today and then breaking news happens so what they're going to do is they're just they'll probably cut that picnic story and save that for you know the five o'clock show or a lighter show so that they can hit the breaking news as many times as possible mm -hmm. and is there a huge like failure to success rate like do you guys send out like a ton of stories on a day and hope to get enough back for a 5 p.m show Yes, especially in smaller markets. So, you know, if you're in New York, there's stuff mm -hmm. happening. You know, you don't have, to, there's no shortage of content. But, right. you know, a smaller place, like most of the places I've worked, yeah, it can be, it can be really hard to even come up with like one story idea for the meeting, let alone three. Um, mm -hmm. And then you got to find people to go on camera. So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a very like um, anxiety ridden process just because like you're not going in knowing what to expect every day right yeah it's got to be way harder in small towns like after mm -hmm. a certain point you have the whole the whole village has been on the show at this yeah, point yeah 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 exactly so so you know how important was writing in this entire process was you'd get these pitches were you putting everything together and scripting it before you go live or tell us a bit about that process yeah, so writing is extremely important. Um, you know, even going back to college, um, I lo took a lot of writing classes, you know, learning AP and new style writing. Um, and then something that, you know, I think people may not realize about how important writing is for TV is that, you know, you have to be able to read what you wrote. <laughs> like, if you, you know, jotted things down with misspellings or bad grammar and then you try to read that on air like that's really not going to look so good right right <laughs> mm -hmm. so i imagine this process which sounds hectic and a, and a difficult thing to learn has really helped you in your writing career right yes um so from start to finish from a pitch from a news story or a pitch to uh, a written story um, how similar are those skill sets and how similar is that and how much has that helped you, I guess, in both sides? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely helped a lot. Um, I know like one of the first things I noticed about the scripted platform was um, there's a lot of options to pitch blog ideas to companies. Um, and that was, yeah, I mean, totally just a seamless transition for me. Um, and I think I was able, I am able to come up with pitches that maybe other people if they haven't worked in news would think of you know for instance mm -hmm. i remember you know oh it's july fourth of july time for a food safety story like we would do those stories every right. single year so now i'm like oh okay can I, I, there's a client i can pitch this to so yeah, yeah it's been very helpful it is funny how the parallels between working for a brand and delivering the news but yeah. maybe maybe that has to do with like the you know, branding of our news over the last 30 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I, uh, you've you've really climbed rather quickly as as a writer on scripted. What um what made you go into the transition of freelance writing? I mean, based on what we've talked about so far, it actually seems like it's almost fairly seamless based on yeah. your, your previous experience. But what made you make that choice personally? Yeah, so I got really lucky with how it all worked out. So I knew that I was pretty much done with working in TV news. Um, you know, I was just the the newness had kind of, you know, worn away after a few years and right. you have different goals in life. You know, um, I just wanted to not have to worry that I was going to have to work Christmas or, you know, have a normal schedule. Like I was like, oh, my God, all I want is just to get off work at 5 p.m. <laughs> so I just knew that I was like, you know, just ready for something different. Yeah. Um, 
And so before I left, because so I ended up leaving like end of February 2020. So really a horrible time to be yeah. looking for a mm -hmm. job. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I had applied for scripted. I, I don't even really remember it. Um, I must have applied like while I was still working in TV, you know, kind of preparing for that transition. And then right when I had left and kind of realized like this, you you know you can't really look for a job at all right now <laughs> like yeah. march 2020 nobody nobody knows what they're doing um and then i ended up getting like the approval letter from scripted so i was like okay let's check this out and you know i noticed right away that there i think there are a lot of sites out there that really want to pay writers like one cent per word or just like horrible yeah. rates yep and so i was like i was struggling with all those other sites it's like this is just not going to work and so i real i saw on scripted like oh wow okay this seems like they you know actually want to you know pay writers what they deserve um so i was excited to try it out and it just yeah i've, I've really loved it the platform the support um yeah it's been great and now i mean i I could not see myself going back to an office. You know, it's, it's so great <laughs> to kind of work so independently and work from wherever. Yeah. We're, we're going to slap that answer onto a commercial sometime. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, about as good as it gets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell, can you tell us a little bit about the work you've done on scripted? Uh, I mean, without naming any brands specifically that you've worked with, like what kind of writing have you been able to do and how was that transfer pretty much from news to brand writing? Yeah. Um, so I have, I've done a lot of different types of writing, um, which, you know, I would say my favorite thing about working in the news was just getting to learn so much. You know, you really stay on top of current events, you know, tax hikes in the city, just a lot of information. And that I found with freelance writing, you know, when you diversify what you write about, you know, is the same thing. So I really, I really enjoy that. It's, you know, different topics. So, you know, for instance, when I came into scripted, I didn't really know much about SEO. I, I remember we took an SEO course, but, you know, I, I didn't right. know much. Now I've written so much about SEO that, you know, I find myself like judging people's websites. I'm like, oh, dot net. <laughs> 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 or like, oh, no blog post. So it's, it's funny and it's great because SEO is an important thing to know about. So I, I do, I really like that variety. Um, and I, I enjoyed legal writing too. You know, as a journalist, I sat through a lot of court casings and court hearings. Um, and so it became, I got some good experience breaking down kind of more complicated cases um, and laws and stuff. So that's translated perfectly as well. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, usually we ask when we do have writers on to the show um, a bit about, you know, how they, progressed on the platform your story actually just seems really seamless from yeah. <laughs> and it makes a lot of sense here as to how i was curious myself you know i managed the writers unscripted and and uh of course you know we took note pretty early that you were really just kind of killing it um and this makes perfect sense what kind of advice would you give to writers who are out there who are who are kind of looking to duplicate that success and trying to um you know diversify the type of topics they write about or kind of keep a, you know, the well of ideas that they have filled? Yeah, so I think definitely in the beginning, um, you need to really just take what you can, what jobs that you can, um, you know, even if you are, you know, cause you gotta put in a little bit of work before you can get to, you know, these platforms that pay better um, or better paying jobs, but it's so important to build up your portfolio. So right. in the beginning, like, you just take what you can you know um yeah so you can build that portfolio up and then you know you can start progressing but i think the portfolio is really important um and just having different um types of work types of clients in that portfolio um also read a lot um i have found that it's so it's so interesting you know now i'll read like a new york times um article and i'll be like oh wow they said that's so cool and i have like a note on my phone that's terms and so i just like write down like these different terms um that i can use in my writing uh, so yeah just reading you know seeing how other writers are writing um and just reading so that you can stay on top of 
you know, trends and news because that's really right. important too. Yeah, totally. It's super important to keep reading and, and of course, improving on your craft. Can you tell us about your work with Adweek through Scripted? I know you've been doing a lot of publishing over there. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that is one that I'm so excited about. Um, so I knew about Adweek. Well, they have um, like a sister site called TV Spy. It's kind of like where uh, journalists go for like their gossip a little bit. Not gossip, but <laughs> it talks about like industry moves. So it's like, it'll be like, oh, so-and-so jumped a hundred markets, you know, got hired in Buffalo, New York. So uh, it's just like where people okay. just keep an eye on it. So I had um, seen some ad week stories just, you know, kind of from being on that website. Um, and yeah, I, I remember one of the project managers at Scripted they asked if I would want to work on that. And I was like, okay, yeah, I mean, this is great. I was so overwhelmed with the first one. Uh, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't really know much about advertising. Um, and it took me like a really long time to do. Um, but I kept taking them, you know, because like I was saying in my advice, you know, just try, keep trying, um, right. do different things. And now, yeah, you know, now I, I look forward to getting those and you know I, i'm faster at them and and it's really cool too to kind of see myself write in those different terms um that i never would have learned before that and uh so what i do mostly for them is watch one of their webinars and write about it so it's really like reporting um because you know i'm taking quotes from the webinars and and kind of filling in the backstory so yeah it, it really is really similar to reporting do you think uh, you'll ever make a return to broadcast journalism or traditional journalism? I don't know. Yeah. Um, not especially now after having so much freedom. Right. I think it would be so hard to go back. <laughs> um, you know, just even with, you know, my appearance or what I'm wearing or being recognized out in public, it's just, it's just kind of, it's hard it's, it can be hard sometimes you know you feel like people are always watching you judging you um mm -hmm. and yeah now it's kind of nice to just take a step back and you know i, I just enjoy the freedom of making my own schedule for sure <laughs> yeah no I, right. I can imagine not having to move a hundred times probably yes yes, well. yes that too yeah. and yeah not having to work you know um until 12 you know midnight or gosh one of my jobs i would produce the weekend morning show. So for two years, every Friday and Saturday, I went in at 11.30 p.m. and I worked like all through the night. Oh my God. <laughs> so I would never, yeah, on Friday and Saturday too. I mean, it was, yeah. So yeah, oh. I cannot see myself going back to that. <laughs> and, well, and also the combination of working those kind of hours and having to look TV ready is, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> a bit high yeah, stress. Yeah, it's really hard. And people you always told me, you know, like your body will adjust to the schedule. And no, it did not. <laughs> I think your body knows, you know. That's what like, they say about parenting. And I found that <laughs> it's still very, very much a struggle to yes, not amen. sleep. <laughs> your body knows. <laughs> um, yeah, so I actually wanted to ask you about a news story real quickly to see if uh, what your thoughts were on the Andrew Cuomo and Chris Cuomo situation. Um, yeah. What did you think about the handling of that through CNN? And do you think he should still be on the air? Do you think he made like a giant mistake? What What's your take? Yeah, I was pretty shocked. Um, you know, I think it's pretty much journalism 101, um, what, what he did. And I know, I think when he came back from his vacation, he tried to, you know, say that it's their policy to not talk about it. But when you're not talking about it, it, it really makes it look like a cover up, you know? So I think they mm -hmm. probably should have taken him off and gotten a replacement, especially in today's climate where, you know, the news media is really under fire. So yeah, right. that does not help their, you know, credibility or trying to build back that reputation. Yeah, I was really shocked by it. Yeah, I mean, that and the like just disastrous handling of the COVID era too, where it did yeah. that. They brought him on like every day to talk yeah. to his brother and make him like this huge star of, of the yeah, COVID. Right. And he was doing a horrible job and was right. also doing horrible things behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. Two like very significant stories. And yeah, they're kind of just brushing them under the rug. So 
I was very, very surprised. Did you find yourself on the receiving end on the sort of local news uh, kind of sector of things of the sort of anti-journalism mindset that's starting to kind of take hold? Yeah, a little bit. Um, mostly on social media, you know, people would just send mean tweets or, you know, definitely fake news was becoming a buzzword. Um, yeah, when, when I got to my last station. So, yeah, um, you can definitely tell that there's a switch. And especially with, you know, with social media, people can write what they want and convince you know their friends that what they're saying is right and so they can just spin narratives and yeah it, it's definitely a very crazy time to be yeah, in the news <laughs> i'm sure you can throw that on the pile of reasons not to return to broadcast yeah, yeah. yeah there we go <laughs> especially your experiences in like small town texas i imagine there's a little bit of a pushback on the journalists yeah yeah i know points. <laughs> i can't imagine what happened yeah after i left i'm sure it was crazy uh so i have to ask has anything ever happened to you while you were live uh that didn't end up making yeah the like cut? a bug flying in your mouth and you're freaking out <laughs> yeah 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 i did have a bug uh flying around my hair one day but no like the show must go on when you're live so <laughs> <laughs> i just kind of yeah i mean it was it was right there um i stopped using that kind of hairspray after that <laughs> i think i was attracted to it um but no i i never really had anything too crazy i had the i had the hiccups once which was horrible <laughs> <laughs> and i just kind of made my co-anchor i was like you gotta read this like <laughs> that was pretty rough well, that's good to hear. I, I actually can admit that I do spend time maybe once or twice a year watching news bloopers on YouTube. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, I, I was hoping I wouldn't eventually find you on there. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Well, I dropped my laptop once, but I caught it. <laughs> it's impressive. That's about as crazy as it got, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that actually sounds great to have that footage of that. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you so much for joining us on this session. And, and you know, you're a great writer and scripted thrilled to have you on. And uh, yeah, thanks again for, for joining us on this episode. Yeah, thank you guys so much. And before we let you go, is there anything you're currently working on that you'd like to plug or, or let us know about? Um, no, not really. Just that, you know, I'm available. Check out my scripted profile. And yeah, very happy to be working with you guys. Awesome. Well, thanks again so much. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye. All right. So that was definitely interesting. I, uh, <laughs> I had no idea, um, that newscasters were working on that, those kind of deadlines. Yeah, me either. I, like I said, I thought, I thought maybe there was a really early morning pitch and yeah. to get a news story by five is crazy. And they start at, what was it? What did she say? Two, two thirty. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, a, like, well, you're coming in, you go to a meeting, already have your pitches and then you got to get on the phone and then you have to go out on the scene is like, yeah, yeah. I, I hadn't considered that. I definitely thought it was a different thing. And, and so also I was blown away by the fact that most uh, newscasters now are completely solo. Uh, yeah, that was surprising. I thought they'd have a little more support system than that. But I guess that is the way of the world now, right? You just see instead of a whole news crew on the side of the road, it's it's one one reporter and what their iPhone. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I guess it makes sense. It's just, you know, I, I guess we grew up in that era of like the news vans and the choppers and. Uh, what happened but, to all that stuff? Is it, is it just junked? I, I guess so. <laughs> Riding around I guess in Ubers. So. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, right, exactly. Like, well, you know, she'd mentioned that they give them a vehicle, but I mean, I guess that's also way more cost effective than getting like helicopter fuel yeah and i can understand how that environment can be a stressful one and one that maybe you want to leave uh for yeah. something that where maybe you create your own hours or um you're not up in the middle of the night um trying to put together a story that might not happen you know something we didn't even touch on i, I talked a little bit to her about you know 
how it's got to be weird because you're I think she had mentioned that like people recognize her from time to time you know in those smaller towns and stuff and it's almost worse because it's one of those situations where you know if if you see Tom Cruise over at Chili's yeah. you're probably not going to approach the table right uh but if but if it's your local newscaster I feel like people have this sort of like familiarity with them because they're in their their living rooms every day yeah you know uh so no i i'm not envious of that job yeah and uh, i feel like the new like the newer uh the era is that's the attention they get is almost always negative oh um, for sure but like if you're jim garner he probably gets free steak still in, in every restaurant in philadelphia <laughs> you know but uh this whole new crew of journalists are dealing with the negative landscape of you know people just wanting to to assault verbally uh yeah. you know journalists or don't trust journalists wherever they get their information you don't know where people are coming from when they're gonna approach you like that yeah well and also too just i mean her work ethic really kind of brings to light something that we're always hammering home um just about the importance of deadlines anyway mm -hmm. you know i mean to be able to work under those kinds of deadlines that's that's the extreme um but for freelance writers deadlines are really kind of the only law of the land you know what i mean so um if you don't make them you're in control of your own career here that's the difference if you don't show up for the news meeting and you don't show up with the pitches they're probably going to can you but if you're a freelance writer you're obviously just going to hurt only person you're going to hurt rather is yourself yeah and um, you can tell that she had been put through the fire by the way she works on scripted um, oh, for sure. You can tell for that sure. she knows how important deadlines are and how hard you have to work to turn things around for your, for your employer um, and make sure that you're a consistent contributor, right? I think coming from that journalism and that breakneck speed background has, has really helped her thrive as a freelance writer. Well, and also, you know, how she had talked about the way that um, it kind of helped her approach to pitches. Mm-hmm. Right. Because it's, there's that there's sort of an immediate crossover there. Um, but, you know, I, you know, obviously I, I, I'm just kind of pitching this out, but we maybe we'll reach out to Alexandra and have her write a little something about some uh, some great ways to pitch, because it, that's so true. Uh, there are so many different ways to approach things. And if you know the language, like she was saying, if you if you understand what it is that people are expecting from content and what the trends are and what like the the current blogosphere is taking their approach to things uh you can kind of come up with an infinite well of ideas so i hadn't actually considered that and of course her job provided a lot of training um but yeah i think that once you have an idea of what is expected in the current landscape it becomes a lot easier to create pitches and a lot easier to create um quality content for your clients yeah and you can be a very skilled writer and just not have that particular skill set right the, yeah the, the pitching set and that's something that you need to learn as well um i think it can be trained yeah is the good thing right yeah. you know it's not like alexandra came in here just like yeah man I was just born with it <laughs> you, know, yeah. got that, you can tell that got that's that something pitching that she's gene. worked on <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's no pitching genes but uh yeah um but no super super exciting episode uh, and, uh, for all of you listening, please, if you, if you have a moment, like us on, uh, your preferred platform and, and feel free to share, uh, and please join us next time on the scripted podcast. We'll see you next time.